Coming up this week on Conquest 200. 2,000, 1,800. Ship no later than the 9th. We don't have enough to spread. September starts our busy season for the scent company, but it's also the time that we have so much work on the farm. Okay, I'm out of darts. This is Doug Roberts. He's raised some of the largest typical whitetails in North America. With his wife, Karen Roberts, CEO of Conquest Scents, they manufacture and produce the best hunting scents in the world. From a family deer farm to the leading scent company in the hunting industry, world-class whitetail genetics and God by their side, this is Conquest 200. Conquest 200 is brought to you by Key Apparel, makers of Polar King. Rule the elements. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you for all that you've given us, the blessings of family and a farm. Thank you, Lord, for your guidance and your direction. I pray that you would bless our family, bless our workers, bless our farm on this day. Be with Doug and I. Give us the guidance and the direction that you would want us to have to be the leaders that you've called us to be. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good day. You too. It's the time of year that every hunter dreams of. The air is crisp, the leaves are turning, and the white-tailed deer are preparing themselves for a long, harsh winter. For Doug and Karen Roberts, there's no busier time of year. Hunters from all across North America are planning their hunts for the upcoming whitetail season, honing their craft, tuning their gear, and depending on the next shipment of Conquest scents to hit the shelves. Having a company in the hunting industry, this is the big kickoff of the season. This season is something we prepare all year for. There's 2,600 total going in the Cabela's. There's 1,800 going in Bass Pro. 2,000 in Gander. We haven't even looked at back orders yet, too. We're gonna have to figure out where those are gonna fit in. Got 2,000, 1,800. 2,000, 1,800, and ship no later than the 9th which is next week. We're really close now, we don't have enough to spread. He's gonna have between 350 and 400. Nate's pouring right now okay. of liquid. But that'll get, that'll get us through. Go Team Conquest, hold. Yay. Okay. Today, Doug has another challenge on his hands as the annual de-antlering process begins. Rock and roll. All of the one and a half and two and a half year old bucks will be darted, vaccinated, and have their antlers removed to prevent injury during the quickly approaching rut. It's a delicate process. September starts our busy season for the scent company, but it's also the time that we have so much work on the farm. So de-antlering our year and a half old and two and a half year old bucks is expensive to do, and it has to be done efficiently in cool weather. I'm gonna go out and try to start darting bucks in the back. <clears throat> You've gotta get pen three up into this first long-term holding stall. We need pen three as a breeding pen. When we're darting this many deer, especially bucks, uh, I load up normally at least five darts. And I'm gonna shoot all five of those darts. We'll get those deer to start falling asleep. But I also have to move from place to place when I'm darting because they figure out where I'm at. After three, four, sometimes I can get five darts off, but normally 
three, four darts, they figured out, oh, that's not a good place to go. These darts here are one cc darts, so we can double the strength of the drug. Uh, what's nice about these, it being clear now, you can see how the drug fills in, but also the gelatin barb, it actually holds onto the deer's skin, and then uh, moisture in the skin actually dissolve it, and then the dart just falls out. Um, they've come a long ways. They used to be just solid orange and you couldn't see what you were doing. Uh, the dart would hit and just blow right back off. So you only got part of the drug in to the deer. So these new darts uh, from new dart, <laughs> no pun intended, um, work extremely well. We'll get five deer darted. I'll go load up another five darts. I'll go and move, shoot five more darts. Now the first five have fallen asleep. So now we have to go tie those up and move them up to the barn so we can work with them while the second group is falling asleep. Everyone has to know how to maneuver around the pen and the deer and which ones to actually pick up. This is a Savage Nation son. Now, even though he's an eight, he's got width, he's got good beam length. So I'm gonna breed a few does to him, just assuming he may turn out like his dad. This segment is brought to you by Beam Fence Company. Conquest 200 is brought to you by Key Apparel, makers of Polar King. Rule the elements. By Conquest Sense, makers of Evercom and VS1. By Nadifa and Armada Grain Company by Revive Microbials, and by Dunkel Veterinarian Service. Yep. Just want to always try to keep at least an inch and a half, two inches isn't all bad. And you're good, right, Rick? Doug Roberts is vaccinating and de-antlering all of his younger bucks before the whitetail rut. Removing their antlers is a precautionary move to ensure none of the deer get injured or killed during the coming whitetail rut. With so many bucks on the farm, it would only be a matter of time before they begin sparring with each other and claiming their territory. We have a larger group of bucks that we actually have to de-antler, so I've actually asked a couple friends to come over and help to do some of the lifting, and we can move the deer quicker and more efficient with more people. So I've got some extra help coming in today other than just Nate and Talon. That's hardcore flame sun right there. There were three yearling bucks that I decided to pull out and use as backup bucks. One of them is a hardcore flame son, and that actually is the best yearling that we have. He grew the most amount of antler, and I want to get some offspring out of the hardcore line. He doesn't know it, but he's going to be a really happy camper. He gets girls. The other one is just a typical eight. Now his beams are extremely long and there's room to put more tines, but he's a Savage Nation son. Grab the antler, it'll be easier. Yep. This is a Savage Nation son. What I did is actually was a straw semen that I bought at the Nadifa National Convention, their fundraiser a couple years ago. Um, Savage Nation, um, sadly to say, passed away. Um, I believe it was last year, so actually you can't get any more semen, so that's kind of why I'm putting it in, into a breed pen and breeding a few does with him. 
you know, he's just an eight right now with a couple kickers at the base, but his dad was a tremendous, had a tremendous typical frame. Savage Nation was a 10 by nine typical frame buck. Even though he doesn't look tremendous right now as a yearling, I'm hoping he grows into his dad and passes his dad's genetics on in his offspring. So I'm taking a little bit of a chance on if him. If he turns out anything close to what his dad was, um, I'll have a little jump start on it. For a one-year-old, the framework is there. He's got some of the extras around the base, but that could clean up. The third buck I picked, we called Bruce. And Bruce goes back to Die Hard. He's a perfect five by five typical. Yes, he's got a nice little compact basket rack, but I like the time length. It all seems to be in order right now. And with the number of does that we're breeding that we have to have backup bucks for, I chose three of them so I could spread those does out and, and not overload any of these bucks that are being used as backup bucks. This segment was brought to you by Hanchard Chiropractic. We get your back in the game. This week's tip from the Deer Professor is brought to you by High Rack Ranch of Michigan. The scent industry over the last number of years has been coming together and trying to come up with a new set of standards by which urines can be collected. And it's all because of CWD. And what we have come up with is the ATA Deer Protection Program. And you're gonna start seeing a symbol, an ATA with a check mark inside a circle on a lot of the products. Conquest Sense has it, and so do the other major companies. What that tells you as a hunter is that that urine was collected from a farm that follows these strict standards. So you know as a hunter that you're using a scent product at the very highest standards possible. As a hunter, look for the check mark and know that you're supporting the companies that have collected their urines with the very highest standards. Doug Roberts has been darting his yearling bucks in order to remove their antlers before the rut kicks in. This process will ensure that the young bucks can't injure themselves or each other while playing or fighting in the coming months. He is 53 orange. Well, today went extremely well. Everything went very smooth. The deer moved very well. They stayed calm. Uh, we made our adjustments perfectly and, and we picked everybody up very quickly and got everything done. So uh, very relieved that the day went as well as it did. Well, that's the end to a long week of cutting antlers off. Uh, and just got the last one done. So ready to get some lunch and herd more deer. Who shot this one, guys? Little guy, Ryan Jackson. Doug and Karen Roberts are at the Safari Club International Flint Chapters Youth Buck Pool. I show the pearly whites, buddy. <laughs> it's an anticipated annual event where children are smiling, parents are proud, and the community of hunters comes together to share stories and successes. Okay. Well, in Michigan, the first hunting season that actually comes up for white-tailed deer is the youth season. It's a weekend for the youth, for them to get out, and it actually starts before the bow season of October 1st. So it's kind of exciting. It's, it's a way of getting our younger generation out into the woods and getting exciting. They get an advantage. The deer have not been hunted, so they're calm, their patterns are normal and it gives some bonding time for moms and dads to get out in the woods with their kids and be successful. My name's Toby Sellers, and I shot this 12 point behind me. It's kind of in the stage where I was like, am I gonna hit the deer or not? I was more worried if I was gonna hit him or not, not that how big he was. I was worried about if he was gonna get away from me again, because I saw him that morning, and I was worried if he was gonna like leave right away. So you were focused on getting a good shot, and I weren't looking at his antlers and thinking what he's going to look like on the wall, right? Yeah. 
Hi, my name is Sergeant Jason Smith with the Michigan Department of Natural Resources Law Enforcement Division. A couple weeks ago, I got an email to come up here to this event, and I got really excited because this was the first time I ever been to a youth buck pull. And uh, when I got here, it's everything I expected. As you can see, there's a bunch of deer hanging and a bunch of nice, happy little people running around. I love to hear their stories. They're very animated about it. Their little hearts pumping, they were nervous. What, what our goal is, is to get hunter recruitment and retention. And uh, it's great to see that these youth are getting out there in Michigan and hunting. Having a company in the hunting industry enables us to also support youth hunting. And this is the big kickoff of the season. So when the youth hunt starts, how exciting is it that the heritage of hunting is passed on to boys and girls? Safari Club International is the worldwide leader in hunters' rights. With chapters all across the globe, SCI takes hunting seriously and have as much of a local presence as they do global. <laughs> Hi, I'm John Kupiak with the uh, Flint Safari Club International. Dennis Gepri uh, with me here today. This is our fourth annual youth deer poll. And the reason we're out here today is we're trying to get the kids excited about uh, the fact that we have great Michigan whitetails for young boys and young girls under the age of 16. This is the medium right Which here. was a 12 point buck. Along with the deer to make sure the kids get the full experience, we have the Michigan DNR here handing out uh, successful hunter patches. We want the kids to tell the DNR officers their story about how they harvested their, their deer. Great, thank you. So we want to make this a total experience for the children so that we can keep them engaged and hopefully they continue to experience the outdoors like we do and give back to uh, Mother Nature what she gives us. Being able to go up and connect with the kids that are hunting, to pass out gifts and show them how important it is to us as, as a company owner. The t shirts are giving away to us. This is thrilling. It's absolutely thrilling to be able to see the excitement in these boys and girls' eyes and to know that they feel like they're legit hunters now. Like they, they've watched mom and dad. They've watched Grandma, Grandpa, and now they are respected in the hunting industry as hunters. Yes, yes. All right, good job. This segment was brought to you by New Dart, because you can't afford to miss. Conquest 200 is brought to you by Kia Apparel, makers of Polar King. Rule the elements. By Conquest Sense, makers of Evercom and VS1 by United Deer Farmers of Michigan, by Vortex Optics and Grizzly Coolers. We want to get these young kids out there. We want to be able to experience the things outside and have the opportunities to see everything that's out there and, and, uh, and just being outdoors is just a great thing. Uh, you guys are going to be the future hunters, and that's what the SCI does. We are here to protect your hunting rights. So what we're going to do tonight is we've got a total of 43 deer. Doug and Karen Roberts are at the annual SCI youth hunt put on by the Flint chapter. Seeing all of the excitement on the faces of future hunters brings encouragement in their line of work. My name is Matt and I shot my first book with my dad. Well, the age group for this youth hunt, I believe, is 12 to 16 years old. So you've got a lot of these young kids that are 9, 10, 11 years old that have been hunting with their dad, but they can just sit with them and watch. Now they're starting to, they're able to finally go out and pull the trigger or release the arrow. So it's an exciting time. And this is the one hunt that I really believe locks the youth in to being lifetime hunters. So it's important that the parents and, and us adults get every young kid we can out into this youth hunt and get them successful. Hunting as a family creates a bond unlike any other. To watch the struggles and successes, to engage the raw emotion, and to enjoy nature with a loved one is what hunting is all about. We have to keep this going. It takes more than 
taking your child out hunting, you need an organization behind that, making sure that your child, as your child grows and becomes an adult themselves, that they will have the opportunity to take their children out hunting. If we don't act now, we don't do something now, that could go away. We can't turn a blind eye to that. It's Safari Club International makes sure that there are eyes on the events that are going on in the political arena when it comes to hunting. Anything you want to say about that deer? I got lucky. <laughs> you know, when you look at hunting, everyone talks about scores and the size of animals, but when you really look at the heart of hunting, it's tradition. It's family traditions that have been passed on for generations to generations, and most of the time it's multiple generations hunting together. It's grandparents. It's dads and wives, moms and dads, and then it's children's, and then it's grandchildren. Those traditions, really, you can take the animal out of the equation. It's not about the deer. It's about the time spent in the evenings in the cabin. It's about time coming back for lunch and talking about what you've seen. And that's talking about the squirrels and the birds and maybe a coyote, um, maybe even a bear, the deer. It's those experiences. It's the history and tradition of the family. For Doug and Karen Roberts, bringing joy to hunters is what Conquest Sense is all about. And to see the feeling of accomplishment and success on the face of so many children being embraced by proud parents bring satisfaction. The importance of these events for the future of hunting cannot be underestimated. The Conquest team realizes that there's strength in numbers, and a team working as one can accomplish much more than any one individual. As goes on Conquest Deer Farm, so goes in the hunting community.